reading extensive government contracts on large projects and thousands of pages of specifications. Uh, the, the normal construction people for IT are just not into to that kind of stuff. So that's the reason that it worked out real well. And then, of course, with the crash, um, people as old as dirt, they don't really <laughs> run around. Uh, and the industry contracted, and I moved on to other things that, uh, that interest me. And when, when I discovered drones, um, because of my history, my ex personal experience, I knew right away. I just want to point out, I was before color TV. <laughs> I was before the fax machine. I was before the microwave oven. I was before personal computers. My, fir uh, my first cell phone was a gigantic thing that sat on, on my the seat of my car and only lasted for a couple of hours. Um, I was, of course, before the internet. I was before RC aircraft. I was before cassette tapes. Uh, Don't say interest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, any kind, even audio. We had records, you know, vinyl. Any, anyway, um, I went, I've been going to the airfield in Sepulveda Basin in Van Nuys for 60 years. My dad used to take me there as a kid. And we built out of balsa wood and tissue paper and uh, dope. We made beautiful aircraft that we flew on a control line. My father would spend six months, the most beautiful thing you ever see, you go 30 seconds and <laughs> crash. Right at the field where I went uh, three, four years ago and started just meeting all the nicest people that you ever want to, they're geeks. I mean, they, they build everything. They, batteries, they, they're just like Todd. They, they, they got cut fingers and, they, they, and they're very helpful towards each other. It's a wonderful community uh, of people. And, I was just smitten, and I had the time, so I just read everything that I could possibly read about drones on Twitter and Facebook. You'd be surprised what who's on Facebook in the drone industry. I mean, we got the top attorneys in the country, people that have retired, professors that in New York that have females, as a matter of fact, that, that worked as regional counsel for the FAA for for 35 years. We got offices of the FAA that are there. I mean, the resources online are just, what a blessing. And we're tied into people all over the globe. Um, it's just really, really fantastic. Um, all of this hardware stuff, nice, but it's gonna go away. It's all about the actual data, we, we know that. Um, 99 and 9 tenths percent of everybody out there that's flying these things, they're flying what I call gorillas. I mean, there was no, it, it, um, up, in, um, up until a couple of years ago, anything below, I have a the model aircraft at that Apollo airfield in Van Nuys. They've been flying there for 60 years. They're, they're tied into the AMA. Does anybody know about the AMA? Um, it's a, a hobby group for model aircraft. Um, it's definitely uh, worth uh, investigating and learning about because they've been doing it longer than they have been dealing with model aircraft, and that's what they call drones and UAS and UAV and all that stuff. Before there were drones, it was called model aircraft, and they are they have more they have unbelievable experience, knowledge, and expertise in that organization that the FAA just doesn't have. Uh, in any event. <coughs> The FAA has been struggling for at least the last eight years with how to deal with this. They're used to manned aircraft, and manned aircraft are highly, highly, highly regulated. I mean, every nut and bolt on that, that, that plane, and the maintenance of that plane, and the changing of each part of it, and all that, that's what they know. Now, I said the FAA, and everybody talks about the FAA. The FAA is not just the FAA. It's a humongous bureaucracy. And it's got a head in Washington, D.C. with their own agenda and their own expertise. And then it has a place in Oklahoma City where they, uh, where they do registrations for aircraft. 
everybody in the country has to go to Oklahoma City. And currently, if commercial, you have to do it in, by snail mail with the two-part carbon form. Otherwise, you're dead in the water. They go on Facebook, they're all complaining. Across four months, you get the tail number, the number on the aircraft for commercial purposes. I see light challenges, and uh, last April, I registered 10 with the, with them. I was on the get up on the phone. They told me. That passes around. Yeah, sure. This is, this is how behind bureaucracy is with the federal government. That's that a form. That's a form. Paper form to fill out for every like aircraft. Snail mail, snail mail to and from, no, no nothing. No and, uh, and I went to the, the FAA and it has another regional offices all over the country called the FISGO. Um, there's a lot of acronyms in this, in this business, uh, as in any uh, science and acronyms. Um, they are not in tune with Washington. They are not in tune with Oklahoma City. They just say, you want to register an aircraft? Whether it's a drone or whether it's a Boeing 747, the process is exactly the same. The paperwork is exactly the same. And you have to deal with Oklahoma City, and they give you a phone number at the FISDO, and they say, get up and call them only when they first open, because you're only going to get them in that first hour. <laughs> and I was, in the beginning, I was on the phone with them constantly. And then we, we actually sent in, in one letter, we sent in for four tail numbers. And we saw that the, F, the FAA took a cash check and then assigned it to four different examiners. And those four different examiners, one for each aircraft, had different criteria. One of them gave us the tail number immediately with the same kind of paperwork. Uh, the next one wanted something different, a different, with one person, four aircraft, same paperwork, we filled it all out, and that was just a hint of what Washington is like, okay? Washington runs the same way. And the FISDOs run the same way. Each FISDO is a kingdom unto itself. And they're usually, a lot of them are ex-military. A lot of them are, um, they're all pilots. And they don't like drones. <laughs> they don't understand drones. They know nothing about drones. And I call them drones. Not UAV, not UAS, not SUAS. Because the reason I do that, I'm not out to impress anybody with my knowledge or my you know, degrees or anything like that. That's what the public knows them at. And I know from my experience that that's going to be the de facto term forever amongst the public, amongst the broad audience that we're talking to. Yeah, scientists are going to call them different things. But, and, and different people have called them different things. And they're changing over time. And the FAA doesn't even call them the same thing, okay? The lawyers who, who um, got the first 333s, the first uh, um, approvals, they were using the language of, of Washington. And when Washington granted them their permission to fly commercially, they went to the registration. And the registration people kicked back all their registration paperwork because they were using the language of the FAA in Washington and not the language of the FAA in Oklahoma City. It's really that bad. Let me back up. FAA is charged by statute with controlling the national airspace system. All of the skies all over the United States are controlled by one agency, the FAA. Not LA City, not the state of California, the FAA. However, having spent a long time as counsel to, the, to a county uh, government, those guys, even though they take an oath of office, that they're going to uphold the Constitution and the laws of the United States and the laws of the state and the laws of the county, they don't know what that means. And they, they want to get reelected. So if there's a hot topic like drones, they want to get in on the action because media is going to, if they're going to pass a new law about drones, they're going to get all kinds of media attention, make their constituent happy. But they're not following federal law. 
or the supremacy clause or, or the preemption of, of federal statutes, they're just doing their little thing. And the way the law works, of course, they enact the law, the executive signs it in. Now the people in that county think that it's the law. Actually, it's not. Um, yeah, it is and it's not, it's kind of, if you get prosecuted under it, <laughs> and, you get a, and you can afford a decent attorney, he's gonna get blown away. And they're gonna rely on the FAA. Because can you imagine? You try to do science, you try to fly, you try to do anything like that, and every single little city, town, state, park jurisdiction has different flying rules? Well, FAA is, is applying the same principles, and the federal government is applying the same principles as manned aircraft. And they're very important to our economy and interstate commerce and international commerce. It has to be controlled by one source, the FAA. The city of LA hasn't figured that out. So what's, what do you think the solution is to that? Drones are no different than anything else. This has always been the case. It's how our democracy works. And that's what the courts are for. That's why we have three branches of government. And the solution, really, off the record, 99% of everybody is flying, quote unquote, gorilla. And anybody that I've ever dealt with on drones, I say, like, listen to Todd. Todd is, he's, he's the guru. Dan and Todd, they, they're unbelievable. You gotta fly safe. You don't wanna burn yourself, you don't wanna cut your fingers off, and that comes up. That's really important, the safety part of it. Major important. He's, through experience, the guys that are doing this for the last five years, they know, they know better than the FAA. The FAA is not safe. And, and we can get into that sometime, but they're not safe, they don't know. The first, the first thing they should be doing, which they're not doing at all, as of today, there is no place in the country except maybe one university that the FAA has partnered with that, that is authorized to teach any kind of flight training for, F, for, for drones. When you, when you say authorized, what do you mean? I mean that if you want to fly a helicopter, okay, there is a whole process in the FAA with certified flight instructors, certified programs that you go to that and, you're, and then you end up with a certification from the FAA that says you're good to go, you're safe in the, in the national airspace. They don't have any kind of training for drones authorized by the FAA. Well, that, that, no, no. Just say make no. a distinction between because they're training for full size, and we're still talking 55 pounds. Yeah, well, this is everything I'm talking about is under 55 pounds. We're not talking about more than 55 pounds. Uh, that gets into a whole other thing. It's hard enough to understand under 55 pounds and over 55 pounds. We're talking unmanned aerial vehicles, systems that um, that are that are controlled by the FAA. Let me, let me get, I don't have a lot of time. FAA breaks this down, this, this airspace stuff, into civil, civil. So that's um, a Tom, Dick, or Harry, or a corporation on the street. They're considered civil aircraft. Okay, and they, have, they fall under the civil rules. Then the FAA does something that I think is stupid, but they go all the way back to England, and the ships that went across the sea, and the captains of those ships, and they say, that commerce, he's responsible for his, his, his cargo, his crew, and his passengers, and we have to regulate him differently than somebody that's out for a, a, an afternoon sale, just for fun. So they had strict regulations of, of commercial vehicles and the captains, and very little regulation of, the, of non. They break it down into two categories, commercial and hobby recreation. 
That's civil now, okay? I'm only talking about civil so far. But think about it. There's nobody in the plane. There's, there's no passengers, there's no crew, there's none of that. And you got the exact same phantom, or whatever you want to use, flying in the exact same location with the exact same pilot, with the exact same camera, doing all the exact same things. But we're going to regulate this guy who's going to sell his picture completely different than we're going to regulate this guy who's not going to sell his picture. So it's just taking it for himself. That's not going to fly in the long term. It just doesn't make any sense. And there's too many implications if you think it through. Okay? So civil. Next area is public. Public is any governmental, a truly governmental entity. Okay? They have a different set of roles. The civil is over here, hobby and commercial. Over here is uh, governmental. If you're truly a governmental entity, then they treat you different. You, and they give you more autonomy. In other words, today, the, the, it's called the COA. If you are a government agency and you provide them with the proper paperwork, they're going to let you fly your drone. And you don't even have to have a manned pilot. You, you can develop your own program, you can develop your own um, procedures. As long as, it, as long as it's decent, it's going to get approved by the FAA. By the way, um, first, everybody hears about 333. That's the FAA under the civil. If you want to fly commercially, you just did it, OK? Until September 2014, it came through. A bunch, of people, a bunch of Hollywood people went to a top-notch law firm. They spent about a half a million dollars, according to them, to get permission to fly on Hollywood sets, take pictures with drones. Um, they blazed the trail the first seven. Um, they only got permission for one drone on one Hollywood shoot. And they all ran back to the FAA as soon as, as soon as they got that approval and they started getting more approvals. And they've been chipping away at the FAA because the, the rules are very restrictive. For example, they can't fly them at night. Uh, there's night scenes in movies and they want aerials. Not, not cool. So they're trying real hard. They, they want to get rid of the pilots, they want to get rid of pilot requirement and all that kind of stuff. Am I too, everybody knows that there's a commercial, you have to get a per commercial approval from the FAA, and currently they require you to have a regular man pilot's license, and they know full well that those pilots of the 747s or the Cessnas or the helicopters know diddly squat about fire or building or batteries or any of that sort of thing. But they say, yeah, you go ahead. And the only training they require is 25 hours on, the, on, on drones in general, 10 hours on the drone that you're going to use in the commercial, in, in, in the commercial uh, circumstances, and three takeoffs and three landings in the pre previous 90 days, every 90 days. And they require, what they're trying to do is they're trying to put that little phantom into the aircraft box. And everybody in the country that really knows is saying, man, it's not the same. It's really different. And it's and you're restricting the ability of that thing to really be valuable to the scientists, for example. Unnecessarily. It can fly safe without being treated as a manned aircraft. If two American aircraft are within 500 feet of each other, that's a near miss. It's a major thing. People could die in the air and on the ground. If your phantom is 30 feet from another phantom, it really doesn't matter. The worst you're going to do, if you're 
and you're not overpopulated areas or any of that kind of stuff, you're going to lose your phantom. Big difference between that and a passenger plane going down or a commercial plane going down. Not cool. Got to change. Um, you know, going off the top of my head, I'm not going off my nose. The other cat, last category, of course, we said civil. We got um, and civil to get commercial approval is a three three three. Now all the lawyers out there saw the five hundred thousand dollars and they wanted a piece of that, so they went after people that wanted to fly commercially, and it cost a lot of my friends fifty thousand dollars to just. Send a letter to the FAA. All the 333 is is a letter to the FAA, parroting back what they want to hear, and they give you approval. It's not a big mystery. It's a letter to the FAA, and they went from fifty thousand to twenty-five thousand to fifteen thousand to ten thousand, and right now they they don't like advertise. They'll tell you, you know, we will do everything for you, and you got to use us. They size you up and they bill you accordingly. Um, the hobby stores are into it now. I'm doing all the 333s for Drones Plus. They got 17 stores and they want to have 50 by the, end of, uh, by the end of this year. They want to be the Starbucks of drone retail. So if you go online to Drones Plus, you can sign up for $1,000 and pay your money, put in a little information, they send it, they, all the stores send it to me. Um, but I'm doing it to help my friends. That's how I got involved. All the people that I was flying with and, and dealing with and, and really excited about their projects and the potential, they, could, they can't afford 10 grand for a 333. And I looked into it and I said, this is not so difficult. <laughs> it's just a letter to the FAA. I'll do it for you. And, and that's how that took off and started going. Now, on that 333, and the call is the same thing. It's a little bit different, but it's basically a letter to the FAA laying out the bare bones of a, of a program, and the FAA stamps it, and they're going to go. Did you have a question? Yeah, so using drones for academic research, is that considered commercial use then? Okay, now. If there's uh, no monetary... Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. We, we're not going to go there. Okay, here's the story. The FAA is trying to build their jurisdiction, okay? There's approximately 90,000 aircraft on any given day, manned aircraft, in the NAS in the United States. The FAA said publicly, we expect a million drones just for Christmas. Okay? So you're going, think of the budget, think of the jurisdiction, think of how big our agency. That's what government agencies do. They grow their, their empire, and, and this is a perfect opportunity to do that. They are taking a very restrictive position on any kind of uh, uh, flying. It is the it's determinative state of mind of the pilot. If the pilot is going to go up and take pictures or get data for his personal use and satisfaction, and it's not connected in any way, shape, or form with money, he's cool. He's good to go. But even if he's just posting on YouTube and getting goodwill for his business, they consider it to be commercial. They're really, really strict on that. However, the good news is, as of May of last year, they changed. They were going around searching YouTube. They were going around looking for, for trouble. And they were calling up people and leaving messages on the answering machine. This is the locals, the FISDOs, and the safety, the safety inspectors. They were calling them up saying, man, better Take down your website. The public went nuts. I mean, the public that's involved with drones went nuts. The lawyers went nuts. The First Amendment people went nuts. And Washington sent, it's online. You got 8,500 pages online. I probably read them all. <laughs> I'm that kind of guy. 
they send and they issue more every day, and it's very confusing. And they tell their people, don't print this. <laughs> it's it's an excessive. Do not print the eight thousand because some of some of the safety inspectors were printing out this stuff. Um, I lost my train of thought on that. Um, the, oh, oh, the, uh, Washington, Washington said said. Memo to all the physicals in the whole country and said, look, you will not harass these guys. We are not the, the drones police. We are the drones educator and the, drone, and the safety people. And your mission is to educate. And here's the only letter that you can send to those people. And you can only send a letter to those people. And you can't change anything in the letter except to put their name on data. So they crank, cut that all down. Now, what's the rule for that? It's really a little crazy. It is perfect. You're allowed to be a hobbyist. And the, the, the hobbyists, the, the, the FAA and the media puts out a lot of misinformation. Because, let me back up. This is a rulemaking agency. And for 35 years, all they had about model aircraft was a policy statement. Said, this is what we suggest you do with your model aircraft. Just a suggestion. And all the lawyers online say, it's just a suggestion. It's not law, it's not a regulation, it's not policy, it's not nothing. There is no law, according to some very prominent attorneys in this country, governing UAS. And Congress in 2012, in the um, FAA Modernization and Reform Act of 2012, told the FAA, we want you, we don't want America to be behind England and Africa and China and Japan. We want to be America. And this technology, we want to grab a hold of it. We want to advance it and foster it the way it's being fostered in other countries. Okay? The FAA, like, Supposedly. They, 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 didn't, they, didn't, they didn't go for that. Okay? And they gave them, they said, do it as fast as possible. And do it for commercial and do it for public. By the way, the third category is military. We really don't need to deal with that. Okay? Um, they do it pretty much what they want. They don't follow any rules except their own rules. That's, those are the two categories. So, they had the Congress gave them a strict deadline. FAA, you will have all this in place by, by the end of September <coughs> 2015. Came and went. What the FAA did do is in February of 2015, there's this, just to back up, it's simple, okay? These federal agencies can't just do whatever they want whenever they want. It's called due process. It's a constitutional right that the public has. There's democracy. They got to follow the rules. Due process is important. There's substantive law. It's not a big deal. It's not complicated. Don't glaze over. They want to regulate you, okay? Todd has been flying for years. He's flying for money. And it's fine. It's okay. No problem. Well, if the FAA wants to step in and now regulate his pocketbook, they're supposed to give notice and an opportunity to be heard and make a decision based on a rational basis. They're not supposed to just say, we're changing our policy. So they've been changing their internal policy, but they haven't been passing any regulations for UAS. Not at all, except they promulgated in, in February 2014 they, they promulgated a regulation and formally, in accordance with the Federal Administrative Procedure Act, they did it right. And supposedly, we are going to have our first regulation, formal regulation from the FAA. It will only deal with commercial use under 55 pounds, um, sometime between, according to the FAA, March 24. First to the end of June, they say we're going to have it. 
and I can go and do a whole other class on what, 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 what it's going to say. Okay? But anyway, um, oh, the ma officer managing budget says, I don't know, they're all right. Our audit says it's going to be um, December or yes. January or yes. January of next year. Okay? But I'm, I've been studying that too, and I think I, can, I got a ways around. Anyway, um, Professor here was very interested in these prosecutions. Everybody's scared of the FAA. This is a federal government and they're claiming <coughs> major criminal and civil fines. Now, if you study this the way I studied it, this is an or this is all an orchestrated campaign to increase their budget and their power. All this stuff, 99% of the stuff that you're hearing in the news, that's the pilot union who has opposed every single application for commercial use of a drone, they automatically put in 10 pages of opposition, saying we don't want drones, you should approve them. Do, 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 do. Well, the FAA had to put that aside because <coughs> they're too valuable. They're way too valuable, drones are, and the, and the data that they're able to capture. That's already been proven, and um, so now the pilots got together with the FAA, and they, um, they said, Send us complaints. You see a drone, you have, it's a near miss, and we're going to put it in our records so that we can then use it against every the public and all the local law, the Congress and the, law, the legislature, all that, so we can regulate. Okay, that's what's going on. They got together with the Forest Service. The, you know, the firefighters is one of the big deals. Okay, drones are you, you fly, we can't fly. Well, what really happened? If you go dig in there and look. The FAA, the Forest Service, and the Pilots Union got together and they talked it all up and they prepared it all for the fire season and they even created big, beautiful posters. Before the sun. Before, before the problem. And then when they were ready to roll it out, they went to all the news media outlets and they said, we saw a drone and if, and we and we had to land the aircraft. And that's that reverberate around the globe. And the common guy in the street believes that, that really happened. No, it was a setup. It was it was it the reason it was a setup is because the hobby people can pretty much do what they want. They only have one rule. And it's not even a rule, it's a policy. And it's really the common law. You can't fly reckless got to listen to Todd and do it his way, and you're good to go. You can go over 400 feet. You can go at night. You can go, and you only have to notify the tower. It's, the rules are really clear. That caused a lot of problems for the FAA, because they're saying to the commercial people, the responsible people, the people that have invested lots of money and expertise, Universities, that, that sort of thing, commercial universities, not public. They're restricting them so much that they can't compete with the hobbyists. Not acceptable. I mean, that, they, that can't last. Okay? In the meantime, the public is learning about drones, and they're like cell phones, they're like computers, they're like the internet. There's going to be a drone tsunami. And because they can help everybody. You, we haven't even thought of the things that, when, when we had the cell phone, you could make a phone call from your car. That was cool, okay? We didn't think about, we couldn't think about all the things that were gonna happen that really good. So that's, that's what, that, to me, it's a no-brainer. The tsunami is, is there, and the tipping point has already been reached. And we can help that to happen by following what Todd said and advocate for the technology and show them that, it, that you know, a GoPro camera at 100 feet can't even make out who you are, let alone spy on you. And if it's hovering overhead, the pilot's trying to get his, his bearings or adjust his camera so he can take the sunset. You know, it's, it's not about you, okay? And, and yeah, we pay some lip service to privacy, but between your open Wi-Fi and cameras at every every place you go outside, 
that's not going to happen with them. The drones are not the privacy problem that people think they might be. Um, I'm involved with companies that are, are flying on a regular basis for Hollywood. They're flying on a regular basis for um, all across the country, all across the world. They call me from Africa. They call me from New York. They call me from, I'm, I'm, I'm tied into, as a result of helping people out, people are reading my petitions on the FAA site, and they, they send me my emails there, my phone number's there, and the petition. So they get in touch with me. Help me! <laughs> so I'm meeting the, the greatest people you can possibly imagine. And what I want to do is network and build. Come on, we can do it. You know, we're not going to wait for somebody else to do it. We're on the ground floor, and if we associate with the right people, we can really make a great contribution and can really advance all different sciences, advance the UAS, and so forth. Prosecutions, Dr. Anderson, there's only been two, okay? And uh, I'm going to look at my dates because I want to be accurate, you guys. When you say prosecutions, this is somebody who got in trouble for flying. Yeah, this is, this is only. From the FAA. Yeah, there's only been only, exactly. There's only been two. Um, uh, March, hold on, hold on, hold on. We just look real close. Oh, and by the way, they're being completely unreasonable. A manned <laughs> aircraft, a manned aircraft, a paraglider, okay? You're flying 100 feet in an aircraft. They don't require any of the stuff that they require for drones. They just kind of like ignore them, okay? Sport pilot, we've got a driver's license. Have a nice day. Of course, there's some, on the flip side, there's not, there's not three million of them. Um, and in your backyard and in your cities and that sort of thing. Let's see. Um, okay. The first case, he flew in 2011. FAA played with him for a couple of years, and in 2013, they prosecuted him. Okay, they brought a case against him. Um, he was subject to a $10,000 fine. His name was Raphael Parker, Hiker Parker, Herker from, from, Herker from Team Black Sheep. We call him Trappy. He's my buddy on Facebook. And we converse regularly, okay? Ace's guy. He's right now cutting edge. He's developing the hardware to be able to fly 25 miles from here with a drone. Um, so they prosecuted him, and there was an attorney on the East Coast, his name was Brendan Shulman. This was New York, right? Was this in New York? Uh, no, the, 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 the incident was at Virginia Tech. Oh, Virginia Tech, right, right, right. right. Um, yeah, the incident, he flew a fixed wing through the campus. This guy is an ace pilot, okay? He's flown since he was in the womb. <laughs> and, and he, but people never saw that. So some of them got a little worried. And the FAA said, this is, this is totally off the charts. And he's flying at this kind of thing, okay? Smaller than that, I think. Styrofoam, come on. You know, I go online, you'll see people, those bouncing off people's heads. And all it does is put a little dent of styrofoam. Anyway, Brendan Shulman did a really good job. He went before the administrative judge and the administrative judge said to the FAA, you gotta be joking. This is not an aircraft. This, this, is, this is some toy. Get out of my court and get lost. And the FAA freaked. Oh no, we have no control over these dangerous aircraft. All these millions of things that are gonna be flying in our NAS, we don't have any control, according to this judge, they're just toys. So they immediately appealed to the NTSB. I guarantee you they were talking that the whole building was shaking as a result of, of that decision. And of course, the NTSB said, yes, they are aircraft. An aircraft is any device used for flight in the air from the ground to the moon, infinity and the FAA's jurisdiction. 
So NTSB sends it back in a normal trial type situation. Now we're going to decide whether he's reckless. Because all we decided was it wasn't an aircraft, and now it is an aircraft, so now we can talk about recklessness. He spent over a year with an attorney, um, and he really wanted to, what everybody wanted to win was it's not an aircraft, or it is an aircraft. That was decided, so they settled the case for 1100 bucks, and the um, no admission of any wrongdoing. He's a, he's a, celeb a global celebrity, Parker is, completely clean record, and the FAA just moved on, okay? Um, there's been a bunch of educational letters prior to May. I haven't seen any since last summer. And normally when, when the guys get them, they post them online and everybody shares them around, so, certainly in the circles that I'm in. I haven't seen any educational letters. Instead, we had the pilots making the complaints, and they turn their attention to hobby registration of pilots, not aircraft. So in September, they took all their data, all oh, these are so dangerous, and we gotta, we gotta register them. That was all, in my opinion, a subterfuge. It was designed strictly because Congress said in its 2012 uh, uh, statute to the FAA where they said, get your button here and, and foster this technology, Congress said, by the way, Amy's doing a great job. Stay away from model aircraft. Don't touch them. But because model aircraft are able to do so much more, the FAA has different plans in Congress or the courts. And they're planning, mark my words, they're going to try to apply all of the manned regulations to both hobby and commercial and public aircraft. A little less to public because the public get away with a lot more. The, um, in order to bolster, in, the, in order to manipulate the press and to manipulate public opinion, in September, there was a, there was a company that's been flying for 27 years in New York and Chicago called Sky Pan. Okay? They mainly fly fixed wing, and there was no rules. They, they, they have a really good business getting aerial data with drones. They tussled with the FAA for years, and they even sued the FAA. They wanted to make an example of somebody, so they, in September they came out and they charged them with a one point nine million dollar fine. And they it hit globally it hit all the all the papers. And we, and Skypan has, has, has responded and said, You're nuts, we're safe. We've never had a crash we, of any kind of, of any significance. We've never nobody's ever gotten hurt. By the way, that's what that's the beauty of this tsunami. Okay? DJI, unique, um, 3R, they're telling everybody they fly out of the box. Just, just charge the battery and fly. Okay? A lot of people are doing that. And the truth is, there's very little damage. There's been no deaths. There's been no major deals as a result of millions and millions of people flying out of the box all around the globe. How did, you know, What's the danger? If the danger's not there, they're not being regulated, they're not being trained, how, how are you gonna, how are you gonna say that we gotta treat these things as if they were bombs? Because that's what they're doing. It's not gonna, long term, it's not gonna fly. Um, so that case is pending. And then we got all around the country, we got, you know, conflict, main, mainly between pilots who don't understand the technology and don't want the, and are used to flying wherever they, they fly and nobody's there except these gigantic other planes and, and they don't have to work, especially police helicopters and sheriff's helicopters. They own the freaking sky. Um, now all of a sudden, there's drones. Even if the drones are flying below 200 feet, they 
they don't like, they see a drone, they see a party balloon. Now, they see birds and party balloons all the time, but they can barely make them out because they're conditions and they're flying fast and all that. They've done studies. They can't make them out. But the report says, near miss with a drone. And if it goes, oh, great. We got 600 of these this year. More, please. It's all going to blow up in the face because the truth always comes out in the wash. These things are pretty safe, especially if you follow Todd's and Daniel's advice. One, one note to that, so the, all this stuff came out real quick about all these near misses and whatever. Somebody started looking into it more, and they started looking at where these occurred, and some of these, and some of these were at like 20,000 feet or something, which there's no way any of our equipment could ever get to that level. So it obviously showed you that either A, one person was making it up, or B, they're not educated enough to understand the technology and what the capabilities are. I, I, I over exaggerated that that footage or whatever, but it was some ridiculously high. And uh, and but they were the, the uh, FAA and everybody was using this as, as a way to say, look at all these near misses. But if you actually looked into the data, they weren't necessarily all near misses. So I'm not saying one way or another. I'm just giving you the information. For sick, you're absolutely right. Um, and forensics have shown actual blood and DNA from the bird that the that caused the damage in the freaking plane. Then can send give you lots of pictures of damaged aircraft. The biggest problem they got up there is especially small craft, and we know from the New York City landing on the Hudson, birds. FAA hasn't figured out what to do with that. <laughs> in, in, in any event, um, uh, this is, uh, I want to empower everybody, okay, especially researchers. And I have a selfish motive. The selfish motive is, I get it, actionable data. Return on investment. I have seen actual cases where the drone has come in to an industry and it has saved the, the client millions of dollars. And it has made the operation so much more safe. Um, and they're getting as good, as good or better data um, as a result of the drone technology. Everybody and his brother wants to go to Hollywood, get movies, and they want to go to do real estate shoots, that kind of stuff. I want conservation. I want uh, industrial inspections. I want to really create and, and master the actionable data, low hanging fruit. One of my ideas, I bet. I go to these shows, like expos around and so forth. I met surveyors, LIDAR people, that kind of stuff. Woo! That is really, really, I mean, that excites me. And it, it, it's, it's the potential. When you put, when you, when you marry it to uh, the data to CAD and, um, and BIM and the Internet of Things and analytics, man, I can see it. Clear as a bell, and the clients is going to do good for mankind. This this this, this instrument is going to do a lot of good, and I want to be in on that action. So that's why I met this great guy. He invited me over. Sorry if I was a little disjointed. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. But any, I, I, my, he'll he'll pass around my contact information. I'm actually 24/7 drone. Feel free, preferably an email. Text is fine, or even a phone call, and anything I can do to help any one of you, or any one of your friends, or anyone that's in the drones club, I'm all yours. Okay? Cool. Thanks, Eric. Thank you. So, so again, one of the reasons we got into this was because uh, I was concerned, as Eric was articulating, that uh, that the the heat was all about. Uh, safety or or privacy concerns or you know spying on people or something like that and, and the resource management professionals were not at the table um, when I was at a conference this summer coming back from San Diego after the wildfire situation where people were talking about <clears throat> uh, drones being in the way the they, they there's a talk show on the radio and they got a, a, a spokesman from the California Department of uh, Fire, 
Cal Fire, and then a, a retired professor from San Diego State, uh, and neither of them, to be totally honest, knew what the heck they were talking about. I mean, they really, really, really didn't. And and I was driving in my car, and of course it was it was, uh, it was traffic, right, in San Diego, Orange County. And I was like getting very agitated and yelling, and I couldn't, oh, and the traffic was stopped. Like, this is not right. Like, what is this guy saying? So, um, so we entered it down. We started going down this path several years ago because we were worried that you guys wouldn't have access to this technology, and also that you guys wouldn't have an opportunity to learn how to safely and professionally use this technology. And you'd have to go do this guerrilla stuff everywhere. And so even though it's been a, a challenge to get this stuff uh, going over the last couple of years, um, we think it's the right thing to do and the responsible thing. So even though the FAA has their rules and this and that, and we have to partner with NOAA or go fly on the Navy base or, or all these, these tricks that we've had to do over the last couple of years, um, ultimately, I would suggest that it's irresponsible for us to not be involved in training uh, you guys this way, even though some of the lawyers freak out and say the FAA said this or that. Um, just like uh, Eric was mentioning with cell phones and other technology, it, it's already out, it's out in the wild, right? And it's running around. And, and the danger is that some Yahoo tries to fly over the 101 with a phantom and screws it up and causes an accident and God forbid kills someone or something like that. That would be horrible for everyone, yes. right? And so, so that's why it's important for you um, as when you guys graduate, even if you don't become Mr. Drone Pilot or Mrs. Drone Pilot or whatever, um, that you really understand this technology. And as this enters more and more into the public realm, and, and we are in a, our democracy called upon to make some decisions with regards to this technology, you can make an informed decision about this stuff.